All right, y'all. Y'all know what time it is. It's review time. So let's get it. But first, intro. Yo, what's good, guys? It is your boy, Jason JV, saying welcome to another video game review. And as you can tell from the logo that is actually over here, uh, somewhere, right? Uh, yeah, there we go. Up there uh, is the Gotham Knights uh, game. That's the game that we're going to be uh, discussing. Um, now, I may be a little tardy to the party, but if you guys follow my channel, you guys know I like to finish a game before... I give my overall thoughts, you know what I mean, my overall opinions, my overall views on the game. Um, yeah, because uh, I don't know, I don't like doing, I don't know, I don't like doing first impressions and all this and that, blah, blah, blah whatever, you know what I mean. I got my notes here, I got my list of negatives, I got my list of positives, so let's go ahead and get the negatives out of the way. Uh, one of the cons, the huge issues I've had with uh, the uh, Arkham Knights, or excuse me, Gotham Knights game, is of course unlocking the gliding system. Uh, I did not care for that, um, and I know I'm not the only one. There's been other people who complain about the, the um, or not, not really the uh, glides. It's really the uh, aerial traversal because really Batgirl is the only one who actually glides, um, whereas Nightwing he's got this um, what some call the Fortnite. Um, <clears throat> Fortnite um, handheld or portable jet that he cruises around in and really you don't lose any elevation if anything you can actually increase your elevation decrease your elevation um, when you want to make your, your your drop your landing whatever you want to call it so yeah the aerial uh, traversal uh, system yeah I don't like the fact that we have to you know go through a great length in unlocking these things whereas and I know people are going to get mad because I'm going to make some comparisons to Arkham games. Some people say you can't really compare it to the Arkham games. I beg to differ. There are some things you can compare the Arkham games to this game. And then there are some elements that you just can't. Um, but the the aerial traversal system, I feel like it is something you can compare to the Arkham games. Because in the Arkham games, obviously you already have your aerial traversal. Um, with the exception of Arkham Asylum. Now I say the exception of Arkham Asylum because really Arkham Asylum, you're obviously on Arkham Island and you can't really go wherever you want you can't leave the asylum whenever you want the gliding system if you will only works to allow, help Batman float gently down uh, to the ground but um anyway that's neither here or there um <clears throat> but anyway with the exception of Arkham City Arkham Knight and everything obviously the aerial traversal is a bit different um, I do appreciate that um, Batgirl does have the gliding aerial traversal using her cape and whatnot. Robin's traversal, I didn't really bother with um, because I've heard other people talk about Robin's um, teleportation uh, traversal, which, yeah, didn't, didn't sound fun at all. So it, to me, it wasn't really worth going after. Um, I don't know. Maybe I will unlock it um, during my downtime to test it out and see it for myself like is it really as bad as other people are making it out to be or is it better than what people are making it out to be um red hoods um bunny hops uh, his aerial bunny hop traversal um to me the only thing that i can say about that i didn't like is that um i didn't like how you would lose altitude as you're doing your aerial um, hops if you will um, if anything it should be a straight line if anything and then I don't know then if you you know don't uh, time your jumps right or whatever then you lose altitude but or, or if you but if you hold the trigger down to uh, maintain his aerial hops and it should be if anything a straight line I don't know to me it's like you, you may as well give Red Hood a um, a portable uh, jet like you gave Nightwing, you know what I mean, to traverse around in because yeah, it's it just feels awkward. I have mixed feelings on it. I kind of like it. I kind of don't. You know what I mean? I'm very middle of the road with it. Um, but yeah, I do like Nightwing's little portable jet though. Um, it's really convenient. You know what I mean? It's like a cheat code and getting around. You know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> so I do like that. Batgirl's Cape Glide. Um, I was okay with. I heard people complain about. 
her cape glide. Um, only issue I really have with it was that um, she'll lose altitude uh, much more immediately than um, Batman would in the Arkham games, which yeah, which which was a bit troublesome at times. Um, at times, it didn't really felt like it was really worth playing around with too much. And then when you do the uh, dive bomb and then pull back up so you can try to get more altitude, um, I felt like that part of the gliding system was, was broken because um, <clears throat> it seemed like no matter how hard you, you would try to dive bomb in order to gain more altitude, you weren't gaining that much altitude, you know what I mean? Um, I know it's not it's not the Arkham games, but I mean, but but still, if you're gonna use that same gliding system from the Arkham games, you may as well, you know, copy and paste. You know what I'm saying? You may as well use the Arkham Origins gliding system for uh, Batgirl. Remember, this is the same studio who released Arkham Origins um, many moons ago. So you would think that would be the one element that they would, you know, copy and paste from, but. I don't know. I heard that this is actually a completely different team. Even though it's the same studio, it's a completely different team who made this game. And that certainly shows in this game. Um, but anyway, uh, next up on the list, uh, the lack of control feedback. I did feel like, yeah, um, during the cutscenes, you would get some rumble effects with the controller. Uh, during the gameplay, though, you wouldn't really get too much uh, controller feedback. There was some. I can recall times where there was some controller feedback, but then there'd be times when um, you're, it's not really getting it. Um, but that is a minor nitpick, really, if anything, because, uh, and we'll get more into that um, as we get into to the pros. But yeah, I did feel some lack of controller feedback um, during the gameplay um, for the most part. And then uh, last, but most definitely not least, um, the woke propaganda <clears throat> that is in this game yeah i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna sugarcoat it there is some uh woke propaganda in this game tim drake in this game is um i'm gonna use a fluffy reference um is um creative if you will um not that there's anything wrong with that you know what i mean it is what it is who you sleep with at the end of the day it's none of my business you know what i'm saying um <clears throat> your views on on a woke society is none of my business as well. I, I, look, I'm sorry. Sorry, not sorry. But I mean, I said this in my Saints Row review. I'm going to say it for this review as well. Video games are an escape. They are an escape from the harsh realities of the real world. I don't need any ele any elements, any like social commentary or political undertones in my video games. I don't care. I don't care who you sleep with. I don't care what your political views are. That's none of my business. I don't need that in my video game, especially in a video game about, you know, comic book characters that I grew up with, that I know that I love, you know what I'm saying? Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I can certainly do without, you know, Robin being creative, and um, I can certainly do without talking to certain members of this neighborhood watch that you interact with, um, especially when there's one woman that you meet who talks about her and her wife, um, you know, noticing some things that are going on in their in their neck of the woods and whatnot. And then I remember um, during uh, when when I was grinding off um, off record offline or off my recording or whatever, however you want to see it, um, I was uh, in the middle of uh, resolving a premeditated crime. And as I'm making my way to uh, the crime scene, um, I can hear a guy talking about him and his husband and everything. Um, not once did I hear anybody like a woman talking about her husband or a man talking about his wife. So, I mean, like I said, I'm all for diversity. I'm all for, you know, uh, re representation, equality and all that jazz. But I mean, if you're not going to include, you know, um, NPCs who are straight, you know what I mean? Like a straight woman talking about her husband or a straight man talking about his wife then um, please leave the sexual references out of my games. You know what I'm saying? Um, leave the political undertones out of my games. You know what I mean? Um, if this game does get a sequel, which I feel like it will, then I hope they dial back on you know the social commentary 
Um, please dial back on the political undertones. You know what I'm saying? I don't care. I don't care if you lean left. I don't care if you lean right. I don't care if you're in the middle like I am. You know what I'm saying? I, I just I just don't want that stuff in my video games. I want, again, I want to be able to come into my games escaping all of that. Because that's what these are at the end of the day. They are a form of entertainment. You know what I mean? They're, they're, they're an escape from everything that's going on in the world. You know what I mean? All the social issues. You know what I mean? All the... The, the politics and everything, you know what I mean? I'm trying to escape all that when when I want to play this game, you know what I mean? And I feel like I'm trapped no matter what. Whether I'm not playing this game or I'm playing this game, I'm constantly reminded of what's going on in the real world, and I don't like that. <clears throat> you know what I mean? But anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the pros because um, there's a lot more pros. Actually, before we do, I'll, um, I have one other con. Uh, this was originally a pro, but the more I thought about it, it's actually a con. And that is the treatment of Batman slash Bruce Wayne. Um, now, as you guys know, if you've been watching like my gameplays or if you've watched other YouTubers who have been uploading videos um, showing off you know, the gameplay, the cutscenes and whatnot, then you know somehow, some way, Ra's al Ghul um, made his way into the Batcave, which is not the first time. Um, he has done this. Um, I've heard um, bigger YouTubers who are playing this game talk about, oh, what, a, what an idiot this Batman is to allow someone like Ra's al Ghul to um, break into the Batcave. Well, um, if you think this Batman is an idiot for that, then you must think that, then you also would have to agree that the animated series version of Batman, who was voiced by Kevin Conroy, was also an idiot in the sense that Ra's al Ghul also broke into that Batman's Batcave, um, so it that part to me is is it's unfair. If you're gonna label this Batman as an idiot, you got because of that, you got to do the same for the animated series Batman. You know what I mean? Because the same argument, same points can be made in regards to the episode where Rachel Gold made his way into the Batcave. You know what I mean? Especially when he kidnapped Robin and everything. Um, so yeah. Um, the one thing I will agree as far as this Batman not being very smart or being an idiot in a sense is the fact that at one point in this fight, he takes Raish's sword and he jams it into his his, his uh, torso and it didn't make any sense because he's like, oh, well, I'm not afraid to die or anything, which, okay, fine, I get it. You're not afraid to die, but did you really need to kill yourself by forcing Raish's sword into you to prove that you're not afraid to die and everything you know what i mean he goes i'd rather do that than to keep my i rather i rather keep my humanity you know what i mean and whatnot because you know race was trying to force as you know race is trying is trying to force batman to be his heir and batman has refused you know to be his heir and i don't know i just felt the way batman died in this opening scene it was unnecessary it was forced you know what I mean? I will give WBM credit for committing, you know, for committing to the idea of Batman being dead. And when he's dead, how will the Bat family, you know, handle these issues that ordinarily Batman himself would, would handle on his own? So I get what you're trying to do there. And I appreciate the idea. I get the idea. I appreciate the idea. I respect it. But just the the execution, though, is where I have my biggest issue with. And again, having Batman kill himself by forcing Rish's blade into his torso. I don't know. I think with the amount of years it took for you guys to get this game done, I'm pretty sure, you know, there could have been a better way into accomplishing what you're trying to accomplish with this with that with that opening um so yeah and because then because then, then you have him come back at the end of the game sorry no no spoiler warnings i mean because other youtubers have already posted the ending of this game so it the ending's out there i'm pretty sure a lot of you have seen it and i know i'm gonna get some comments with someone like well i haven't seen it i've been trying to avoid it why are you gonna spoil it well and then not only that but the game's been out since what the 21st we're on November 4th now as of the time of this recording. So, I mean, you have plenty, plenty of time to see the ending, whether you're watching other YouTubers or um, you're watching my gameplays or you bought the game and you play the game. So, no excuses. Anyway, um, you have Batman come back via Lazarus Pit and everything, which Jason Todd and Talia Al Ghul 
stress that whoever enter, enters the pit, they come back a completely different person. They're a changed person. Their um, their mind is is screwed up. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, they they come out very very different. You know what I mean? And um, they do their best to maintain what is left of their humanity. And the more times you enter the pit, you know I mean the harder it is to maintain your humanity and whatnot. Um, so you bring Bruce back, and he's essentially like one of the final bosses you you face in this game. And then ultimately, we do save Bruce. We we snap him out of, you know, the, uh, I guess Jason calls it survival mode. When you come out of the pit, it puts you in survival mode. And so we snap Bruce out of survival mode and everything. And he's back to normal and everything. And um, only for, and then all of that was like, and then it, it, was, it was very bittersweet. And it was a very hollow victory because Bruce sacrifices himself to save whichever character you're playing as by having Talia stab him in the back, literally, in the literal sense of the word. She stabs him with her sword directly in the back, all the way through, out the front of his torso. And, um, <clears throat> and it's like, e even then, but Bruce doesn't die immediately. So, like, I mean, if really, we have time to save him. Uh, but anyway, while you're, um, avenging what what happens to Bruce by taking on Talia, who is the final main story boss in this game. Bruce is making his way into the Batwing, and this is what another thing I don't understand either. And I don't know. I mean, maybe it, it could be explained by the damage the Batwing took when it fell. Because what I forgot to mention in the opening scene where Bruce um, ultimately kills himself with Rache's blade. Um, he sets off these bombs that I guess he rigged up in the Bat Cave to cause a cave in, and it caused the Bat Wing to basically drop from its hangar um, all the way down to the deepest levels of the cave. <clears throat> and so, conveniently, where the Lazarus Pit was that Bruce came out of, the Bat Wing was happens to be just right there, and Bruce makes his way into the Bat Wing. And rather than seeing if he has any projectiles, you know what I mean, that can do some real damage, you know what I mean, like some missiles and whatnot, um, he decides to sacrifice himself. <sighs> Which, I get it, you know, Batman, you know, would do whatever it takes to make sure that um, Gotham is safe, the Bat family is safe, even if it means having to sacrifice himself, um... I felt like I felt like I was being teased, you know what I mean, with the possibility of, okay, um, he he's back. Can can he can he come back for? Can he be back for the next game? You know what I mean. Which uh, if which would have been nice for like the sequel because it's like okay, in the sequel you'd be able to play as Batman. I think that that would have been a dope idea, unless. They have a plan in bringing him back again in the sequel, and then he actually gets to stay with you in the sequel and not get killed again. Um, I felt like Batman in this game, he got the South Park uh, Kenny treatment. You know what I mean? Oh my God, you killed Bruce, you bastards. Um, <clears throat> so, but yeah, so instead of checking to see if he has any missiles or some kind of, you know, guns or something on the Batwing to basically destroy the Lazarus Pit, um, and and to uh, destroy the court of owls who make their their entrance, you know what I mean, in the in the in the cave, you know, with the Lazarus Pit and the Batwing and whatnot. Um, instead, he decides to sacrifice himself by um, causing the the Batwing to take a basically a no a straight up nosedive into the Lazarus Pit, destroying the pit, destroying that that part of the cave. And um, possibly, you know, the members of the Court of Owls. And um, <clears throat> the only ones who survive, other than your character that you play as, is Talia and what remains of the League of Assassins and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It was it was just... It's just I, again, I appreciate what they were trying to go for with this passing of the torch story. But I just feel like the execution and how... Um, Bruce was sacrificed, you know what I'm saying, was, was poorly done. I think they, they could have done a much better job with that. All right, now, 
we'll go ahead and we'll go to the pros <clears throat> characters uh designs and arcs i do like the look of the characters i do like the way the characters for the most part were written um batgirl is one of my favorite characters in this game um jason todd red hood he's one of my favorite characters in this game i also did enjoy playing as nightwing as well i got to play a little bit as nightwing um i'm not sure if i recorded any nightwing gameplay i may have um <clears throat> But I know for sure, uh, in between recordings, I did get to play as Nightwing. Um, the only character I never really got to spend a lot of time with was Robin. Um, and no, it has nothing to do with him being creative. Um, I just never really um, had a chance to really just, just play as him. I did start New Game Plus. I may try out Robin for New Game Plus. Um, <clears throat> but yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and their arcs. I do like... Um, that each character actually has their own um, story arc, you know what I mean? As far as like their development and um, their, their their growth, you know what I mean? As as a character and um, you know as as a person, as a human being, um, <clears throat> you know I I like how um, at first they were kind of at each other's throats for a little bit for the most part, kind of button heads. And then throughout the story, they learn to work together, to work as one unit, as a family, you know, which is what Bruce would have wanted. Um, so, yeah, I, I do I do love the way that they, they wrote these characters. I thought they, they did a fine job with that. Um, the city and or map. Um, I do like to look at the city. I think the map design for the most part is it's OK. It's not the best version of gotham it's there's definitely room for improvement there um but it's not terrible it's not it's not the the, the worst map i ever played on so no real real complaints there um but yeah the uh bat bikes now the bat bikes i do like um no more uh tanks in my game my batman related games which is nice um i do like the bikes i do like the way that they handle um, <clears throat> I do like that we have options in, um, styles. Like, you can have, like, a, a classic-looking bike, um, and they all have three different names, too. Um, I should have wrote those down. I didn't. That's my bad. Um, but, yeah, there's three, three different styles of bikes that you can choose from, and I do like the fact that, um, you can unlock different colorways, if you will, um, for the bikes by completing some time trials and whatnot. Um, I had no problems with that at all <clears throat> and not and not only time trials but there's also other means in um, unlocking um, the bat bike uh, colorways there um, like the traversal system you, there, there's a an, uh, what do they call it um, augmented reality um, or AR uh, side mission that, that you can do or just like in Arkham City um, <clears throat> They, they'll they'll have you they'll have you test your traversal, you know what I mean, by going through these various uh, rings again, just like Arkham City. And if you complete them all, you can unlock more colorways um, for your bat bike. You can unlock, I believe, more colorways for your suits as well. Um, so yeah, um, the and while while we're at it, the the uh, side um, all these little side activities, the uh, the uh, side missions and whatnot. Are also another uh, pro. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there's um, there was a crime I was trying to resolve. Um, these premeditated crimes, I do like those. I do like how uh, there's other like little crimes that you can stop, and when you do that, it, it helps you to level up. You know, in between each mission uh, that you're trying to complete, whether be it a side mission or a main story mission. Uh, <clears throat> The Harley Quinn, or excuse me, before I get into the Harley Quinn side story. So yeah, there's various premeditated crimes. There's um, preventing kidnappings. There's um, rescuing hostages that are, um, that have um, bombs uh, cupped to them. And you have to defuse the bomb, but you have to, be, and there's two ways you can do this. You can go in there loud, but the thing is, um, should you get caught while you're trying to rescue the hostages, then they set a timer. And if you don't get all the bombs in time, then obviously you fail. Um, if you take the stealth approach, uh, which I find is the much better approach, uh, 
then you have unlimited time really to uh, defuse all the bombs and to take out all the uh, thugs. Um, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, uh, the stealth approach is the best approach. I, what I do like about this game is that it really makes you think about your approach when it comes to um, like the side activities, the side missions, and of course the main story missions. Um, so yeah, um, it's not just a, a straightforward thing like most of the Arkham games are. It's You really have to um, strategize, you know what I'm saying, when it comes to all these different things that you want you want to you want to tackle um so yeah now going into the side uh story missions or the side missions um the hardy quinn side mission i did enjoy I, I i love the hardy quinn side mission i love the hardy quinn um boss fight as well um it's no surprise to me that these bosses that they have you go up against are gonna be pretty tough you know what i mean um Again, keep in mind, even though this may be a very different team that put this game together, this is the same studio who gave us Arkham Origins and the Deathstroke fight that a lot of us, you know, do seem to like. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah. So, it's no surprise that they give us boss fights here where the boss are not just, you know, where the bosses are not pushovers. You know what I mean? They, they're going to they're going to gonna fight back and you have to really be, be patient and, you know really think about your your approach you know what i mean when tackling the, these bosses which i do enjoy the clay face one i was originally gonna put that in, the, in my cons list to be honest but honestly i feel like it was my fault the reason why i was having such a tough time with clay face is because i wasn't at a level that i should be when i took on the clay face fight yeah it helps that if you're at a high enough level to take on these bosses because the higher the level you are when facing up against these bosses the easier and shorter uh, of a time you're going to have with these bosses. If you try to go and take them on early while you're at a low level, um, then be prepared to, you know, withstand a long, grueling battle with these bosses. Because, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I do like the, uh, the side bosses. I do like the Mr. Freeze boss battles. Um... The Clayface Mr. Freeze ones, I, I think I like those more because you don't just fight them once. You fight you fight them twice. You know what I mean? Which is which is cool. Hardy Quinn, I believe, was the only one that you only have to fight once because the first round um, <clears throat> you actually face her her minions or her goons, if you will, uh, before you actually have to do another set of missions or interrogate people in order to find out where she is what her next move is and then in order for you to um locate her so you can finally um deal with her uh once and for all um so yeah um <clears throat> the villains and the rogue so yeah um as this, this is gonna go along with like all the different boss fights so i do i, I did appreciate that they included harley quinn rather than the joker Although I hope to see Joker as like a DLC side mission, um, I do like uh, Penguin. His his design in this game I think I like better than Arkham Penguin. I do like Arkham Penguin still. Don't get me wrong. I, I like the the uh, design of Arkham Penguin, but I, if I had to choose between Arkham Penguin and Gotham Knights Penguin, I prefer the look and the voice of the Gotham Knights Penguin versus Arkham Penguin. Um, if that makes any sense. Um, cause to me, this penguin came off as, as a more true to form, like true to the source material, um, character that he, sh he should have been in, in Arkham, in the Arkham games. Um, he, he, he's, he sounds like a, a, a mafioso type of character, which is what he's supposed to be. Um, he's supposed to be a mob boss. He came off like a mob boss in this one. Whereas the other one, the Arkham penguin, I don't know. To me, he didn't really have that same feel you know what i'm saying so between the two the gotham nice penguin is more accurate you know um than the arkham penguin is but again i'm not taking anything away from the arkham penguin because i do like that version of the character as well um so yeah um uh, i did like the fact that they included clayface in this one um and i do like their version of clayface uh i'm not gonna say it's better than, than arkham clayface um 
because really they both kind of play off the same way, especially with the way that they speak using, you know, movie uh, or filming uh, references, filming terms and whatnot. You know what I mean? Like as if they're on the movie set and whatnot. Um, their voices are very similar to each other. I don't know if it's the same voice actor. Um, I do want to re revisit the Arkham games. So we may be doing that um, pretty much after I get done with this review. I do want to go back and revisit the Arkham games after playing Gotham Knights. Um, starting with Arkham Origins, since that's another WB Montreal um, release. But anyway, um, not to go um, off track or anything. But yeah, I do like um, how Clayface was, was handled in this game. Um, Mr. Freeze wasn't too sure about him at first. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the voice. This is not no knock, no shade for the voice actor. I'm sure this is a fine voice actor, but I don't, I feel like their performance though didn't really suit the Mr. Freeze character. Um, and, and at first I didn't quite like what they were doing with Mr. Freeze, just making him go on a rampage, um, having him be uh, so evil in this game. But then once they explained it, um, then I was like, okay, that, that, that makes sense. Cause apparently, um, Batman made a promise to Mr. Freeze and with him being gone and you can't really blame Freeze for this either. Cause obviously he doesn't know, you know, that Bruce Wayne and Batman are both one in the same. So when one is gone, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm sure he, if he stops and thinks about it, I mean, it's not really hard to put together. Okay. Bruce is dead. Batman's gone. Obviously, they're both one and the same, so. I mean. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I do like Mr. Freeze's treatment in this game. I just wish the, the voice, the voice actor could have done something different with the voice. Because, um, to me, he sounds like um, like a like, like a 80s, over-the-top 80s um, supervillain. You know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I did like the look of Mr. Freeze, though. I thought I thought he, he he looked great in this game. So yeah, no no real complaints there. And um, the Court of Owls. Um, I know some people complain about the introduction of the Court of Owls, but I mean, hey, look, this is this is like just the first game. I didn't mind the introduction of the Court of Owls for the most part. However, the the reveal of who their leader was who was known as the voice um it was it was painfully obvious as to who it was um they introduced bruce's uncle jacob kane and um it, it wasn't really too hard too difficult to figure out that jacob kane was the voice um i think the story is well played i see what they're trying to go for uh obvious or not though i think i think for the most part, the introduction of the court and the introduction of who their leader was. Um, yeah, it, it, it could have been great, but I think what they should have done, they should have done a far better job in covering up his identity. Um, because if if you look, even when he has the mask on and you look at him from certain angles, like his neck and his hairline and everything, you could obviously tell us Jacob Kane. They probably should have had him wear like some kind of like like hood or something. You know what I mean, making it a little bit more difficult, even though it probably would still be obvious if you give him like a black hood or something to wear underneath the owl masks that, that he wears. Um, then uh, I, I I think it would have been a little bit harder to tell as to who the voice uh, r really is. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, but like but like I said, it's more of a pro to me, though. I, I do like the introduction. I do like. Um, the story, the the court of our the court of owls story arc, uh, for the most part, I thought it was pretty well done, and I like how they incorporated them in the um, premeditated crimes that you would have to resolve. Um, I do like the incorporation of the of the League of Assassins um, premeditated crimes as well, and uh, yeah. Although I feel like what the the whole Talia um, pretending to be on your side and then only to betray you at the end, it's one of those story tropes. You know what I mean? It's been so overplayed, and that was to me. And to me, that that, that was so obvious. Especially if you if you know the Batman characters, you know the mythos and everything. It should have been obvious too that how 
the whole Talia story arc was going to play out as well. Um, I don't fault the game for that. I don't fault the developers for that. You know what I mean? I think for the story's narrative, it works. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, even though it was just obvious to me, it doesn't take away um, the impact um, that it has. I mean, I don't know. It, it that's just that's just Talia's character, and you know what I mean. And if, if you're a fan of the comics, you read the comics. Yeah, I mean, you you may have seen this story play out over and over again, but I mean. There's only so much you, you can do with that character and um, make sense. And I and I guess it makes sense for her to play out that way. And I guess that's why I'm not completely um, against it, you know. But then again, I don't know. I, now that I think about it, I'm not completely for it either. I'm really, I'm very middle of the road with it. You know what I mean? Um, the story as, as a whole. Well, first, before we get into the story... Uh, let's get into the suit modding. I do love that we get to customize our suits. We get to build our suits and everything. Um, I do like that uh, we have various suits that we can unlock, although you can't really customize them, though. And I think they're going to come out with a DLC, so you can also customize the various suits that you can unlock. It, it has to do. It has something to do with the whole transmog system, which is something I'm not too familiar with. It's something I never heard of before. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I think they're 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 supposed to release some DLC that's going to have more transmogs to allow you to customize um, these other suits that you can unlock. Um, as far as like the various suits that you can unlock, I mean, I do like the knighthood suits. I thought those those are those are badass. Um, <clears throat> I do like various other suits that they have in the game. Just the knighthoods one, the knighthood ones, really stand out to me because they're so because the styling of the suits are very similar to to the Night Watch. The Night Watch is the DLC suit packs that are these where these suits are basically uh, based on the on the designs from Jim Lee, and uh, I do like the fact that we got those as well. And um, yeah. <clears throat> I do like the fact that we get to um, not only customize our suits, we get to customize our melee weapons. We also get to customize our ranged weapons as well. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, that's and that's pretty much it about that. Um, so, yeah, I was good with the whole suit modding system. The story as a whole, I feel like... <clears throat> I feel like it, it, it's... It's a passable story. It's a really good story because what I love most about this story is that <clears throat> it's a passing of the torch story. You know what I mean? You got, you know, the main hero who was at one point Batman and then and he basically passes on and is now giving these knights a chance to shine and these knights are not being given a a Gotham that is you know, um, that he's not giving them a Gotham that, that doesn't have his issues. And it's not a Gotham where the police force, the GCPD is not headed by Jim Gordon because Jim Gordon is also dead in this universe. So I like the fact that it's not only a passing of the torch story, but it's also a origin story of sorts in the sense that the Knights had to prove themselves, um, in this game they had to earn their um their, their their reputation you know what i mean as heroes um throughout this game you know what i mean they had to earn it from a brand new commissioner um basically a whole brand new um gcpd team with the exception of renee montoya who's also in this game and um i do like the way she was utilized um in the story as well so uh yeah um everything um uh, <clears throat> everything that the knights go through in this game it felt earned you know what i mean um it felt like they deserve all the rewards all the positive things that they would get um as the story progresses um nothing was really handed to them on a silver platter they were given the tools to help them um in their missions but the rest was all on them you know what i mean and you really you really felt that as you progress in this game like you're helping them you know earn everything that, that they get throughout the, throughout the uh, story and everything. Um, so yeah, I, I do, for the most part, do like the story. It's just, there's just some elements of the story I could have done without. Like I said, the 
the uh, woke propaganda, the political undertones. I could have done without all of that. You know what I mean? But uh, anyway, I already went over that. Um, <clears throat> as far as bugs and glitches, really the only bug I experienced was um, the time I lost my, uh, my, my sound. Other than that, um, I never really... I never really experienced any other bugs or glitches, um, especially if I'm comparing this to a game like Saints Row, where I did experience some bugs and glitches in that game, um, some game-breaking bugs, glitches. Um, this game, really, I mean, outside of me losing my audio, really, there's no really any bugs or glitches. I know some people were complaining about um, the game crashing, and they were experiencing some other issues with the game. <clears throat> some game breaking issues with the game i don't know if that's um the playstation version of the game i did hear from some people that it's mostly the playstation version of the game where they're experiencing these things um i have the game on the xbox so i don't know maybe the xbox copies are better i don't know um just my guess i do know for a fact though because i have been um following other youtubers who are um, reporting the game apparently wbm is releasing a patch uh, for the game and um, so <clears throat> hopefully that'll, that'll take care of all the issues um, I know some people were complaining about some issues with the co-op unfortunately um, I don't have anyone on you know Xbox that's that has the game so I never really got a chance to experience a co-op on uh, the Xbox however uh, so yeah I mean I can't really say nothing about, about the co-op um, Unless I actually play with somebody to see see for myself if there's any issues with the with the co-op, and then of course um, the frame rate in this game this, this game is 30 frames per second. If you're playing on a 4K television, you're not really gonna gonna, gonna notice um, the uh, frame rate. the The movements on these characters is, are still very fluid. You know they're still very smooth and whatnot. Um, the visuals. Um, in this game are, are still very, it's still, still very pleasing to the eyes. You know what I mean? Um, plenty of eye candy as far as, uh, visuals are concerned. And, um, yeah, I, I, I didn't have any frame rate issues. I didn't really have any, um, loading issues when it came to the visuals. <clears throat> I know some people were, were, were complaining about like textures popping in or certain other elements were popping in. Like at the last second as you come down. I didn't really experience that for myself, um, <clears throat> or at least it. I never really noticed it um, on my end. I mean, I can't really say I didn't experience it. It's, it I'm sure it, it may have happened in a gameplay video or two or three, whatever, but um, I never really noticed that kind of thing. <clears throat> for the most part, like I said, I mean, the game performed fine, in, in my opinion. Um, so, yeah, I'm pretty much good. Uh, on that end it, it's gonna look different to you guys when you see my videos because my computer screen it's 1080p so therefore it only records in 1080p so if there's any like you know frame rate issues there it's because yeah again the, the tv uh, displays in 4k but the computer it records in 1080p so there you go um so yeah so pretty much all things considered with, with all the pros that I have for this game versus the cons, I mean, I would say Gotham Knights, it's a pretty decent game. It's a pretty good game. If I had to rate it between uh, anywhere between a 1 to 10, I would give this game uh, probably about, a, probably about a, a 7 out of 10. It's a 7 out of 10 game. For the most part, it's got you know it, it's not it's not a perfect game by any means, but I don't think it's 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 the worst game I've ever played. Um, it, there's definitely some some replay value to in this game, especially when it comes to like the DLC, which I cannot wait for. Um, I'm dying to see what they what they do for DLC, and um, I hope this game does get a sequel. I feel like it will get a sequel, and if it does, I hope they dial back on the on the woke. Um, social commentary and the political undertones uh, please dial that back you know what i mean i know you're not gonna completely get rid of it but and and that's fine but all i ask is that please just dial it back because again at the end of the day we need to remember that 
the, these are video games at the end of the day, and these are supposed to be our escape, you know, from the real world. So please take that into a great deal of consideration, you know what I mean, and dial back all this this woke propaganda and political undertones. Again, I don't care who you sleep with. I don't care what your political views are. You know what I mean? That's none of my business. You know what I mean? I'm all for equality and, and, and acceptance, but please don't force that on me in my video games. That's all I'm asking. Um, so yeah, um, but yeah, but for, for the most part though, I did enjoy the game. It's still a fun game to play. And um, if you haven't played it yet, Highly, highly suggest y'all pick it up. Is it worth seventy dollars? I don't think it's a seventy dollar game. Um, if anything, I say wait for the Black Friday special. Get the game when it when it goes on sale. You know what I mean? Wait till it gets discounted and whatnot, or see if you can buy it pre-owned. You know what I mean? At your local game store or whatnot that sells pre-owned games, um, because it is definitely worth your time. If you're a Batman fan, if you're a fan of the of the Bat family, uh, this game is definitely worth your time. It's worth checking out. <clears throat> And, uh, yeah, pretty much all I have to say about Gotham Knights, guys. Let me know uh, with your thoughts, your opinions in the comment section down below. If you have the game, uh, do you like the game? What do you like about the game? Um, and if you have the game and you don't like the game, what do you? what is it about the game that you don't really like? What is it that, that's turning you off about the game? And um, Or if you're in the middle of the road, you're not sure if you like it, you're not sure if you hate it, you're kind of 50-50 on it, let me know that as well. And, um, yeah. Any and all constructive feedback is certainly appreciated. Any and all interaction with this channel and my videos is greatly, greatly appreciated. And so, yeah. <clears throat> really hope you guys enjoyed this review. Really hope you enjoyed the Gotham Knights video series. And uh, yes, we will be having, a, like I said, we will be revisiting the uh, Arkham series, starting with Arkham Origins. Then we'll work our way into Arkham Asylum, then to Arkham City, and then to Arkham Knights. So yeah, very much look forward to that. And, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Any and all support for my channel is greatly, greatly appreciated. And with all that being said, it is your boy, Jason JV. And y'all take care. Have a blessed one. Catch y'all next one. Later.